Tesla shares careening with the company stuck in a quagmire of skepticism around its production goals and its own CEO. This despite continued assurances from Elon Musk that demand for Tesla vehicles remains high and the vehicle maker will still meet its steep production and delivery goals. But now with the shares down 46 percent this year, hitting its lowest level in over three years, our next guest says charts of Tesla are actually looking so bad that now is your chance to buy. Chart master Carter works over at the cloud and tell us why Tesla's about to do a U-turn. Carter, what are you looking at? Hi, guys. Well, interestingly, in a very bad day, it's very rare if you have a down tape for Tesla to actually outperform Amazon, outperform Facebook, outperform uh, Salesforce.com, and so forth. So a high beta stock that, yes, was down, but it's down almost so much at this point that I think a contrarian call is the thing to do. For starters, it's hated on the street. We have 11 buys, 10 holds, and 15 sells. Now, remember, holds are sells because nobody uh, typically gives a sell rating. Only 5% of all ratings are sells. Hold means wink, wink for sell, but we don't want to offend the banking department. So what you have is basically sells all over the place and very few buys. Let's look at a few stats and a few other things. It's all over the place, right? The street high is 530. The street low is 55. The consensus is 276. And the stock closed today at 178. So it, it's the Wild West in that sense, and it's in many ways anybody's guess. But what we do know is that it is a high beta trade, and it typically overshoots and undershoots the market. And just as you had a fairly big overshoot here, at this point, I think we've undershot by such an amount that actually it's so bad it's good. A couple ways to maybe make that point, so bad it's good. One, it is right back to a prior low. And in fact, if you take a look where this is, it is exactly to the penny at its 2016 low, right there. And the issue is, does that hold? That's on an absolute basis. Now, how about relative compared to 2016 to the market? Much worse. So here is that same chart, and we're going to look at the percentage you're below your 150-day moving average. And keep this in mind. I'm going to pull it back a little further, and then I'm going to pull it back even further. So we are where we were in 16, but we're actually getting down to a low that was seen only one other time in history. How far <coughs> below trend it has ever been since its IPO. Here is the all data chart. This is literally the lowest point it has ever been. And I think you've got a situation of so bad it's good. I want to make the bet that Tesla actually is a time if you're short to be covering and to being small speculative longs. Carter, come on over. Bring him in. Evan will bring uh, the chair over. You know, while Evan's coming over, he can finish seven in a Brooklyn marathon. How you guys are in that? Yeah. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Time. That's why the chair comes over so quickly. Like lickety split. <laughs> All right. So, Carter, let's just say it breaks this level. Is that catastrophic for the stock then? Oh, it's not any particular big level, meaning we know the stock had well defined tops at a common level for the past, let's say, three years at sort of 290. It's down to 175, which is fairly well defined lows. Even, let's just say this, let's say for fun it's not going to stop at 175, it's on its way to 75. The path lower presumptively passes through a higher price, meaning an oversold condition, whatever, however you want to characterize it, is at hand. And I think at a minimum, you'd want to be covering some shorts and Tim, speculative. Did you cover your short? No, I'm actually rolling down puts right now, which I think makes sense considering the volatility in the stock. And I actually did that today. I went from 175s down to 125s. And, and, and Carter's work on the technical side is always great. And technicals are a, a, a read. But the story here is about fundamentals. And, and to me, if you think about it. There are no fundamentals. The, there are no fundamentals. <laughs> I'm sorry? There are no fundamentals. Okay. So, uh, spoken <laughs> as a chartist, um, there are no fundamentals, but ultimately... They have no profits. So, what are the fundamentals? It's just a dream. Okay. Well, then... So, there are no fundamentals. There's so no valuation. There's no price to book. There's... The, what is it? It's a guy with a tent who makes cars in a tent. <laughs> he sounds like he's talking <laughs> my book right now. So, yes. I agree with that. Um, my point, though, is an oversold condition. By the way, Tesla's not as oversold on an RSI as... FedEx, as GM, as NVIDIA. Just to be clear, they are actually more oversold than Tesla is. But, you know, to me, that, that is kind of the point. I, I think that the, the fundamentals right now are a case where demand is actually truly being questioned. Some of the biggest analysts on the street, people like Adam Jonas, have, have, have basically referred to this as a restructuring story, which means there's a lot of restructuring to go. Well, it's just like any other stock. There are a lot of people who like it long. Uh, as you know, we've all, I think we've all liked it short, but this is the point where I think you want to take yeah, the so road less this, travel. So yeah. Like, if you got that bounce, because <clears throat> it's just, to your point, it might just be an oversold bounce. That's all it could be. So where, where does it find massive resistance? Right. Where is so, the prior breakdown so level? The, the whole point is, right, this is a fast money show, right, yeah. option action. It's all yeah. about finding trades yeah. and making money if we can. The point here is to try to catch something that is oversold 
four, what, could it be 6%, four, could it be 12? But you want to be quick. If and as you're paid to take the risk to gamble on a speculative stock in an oversold condition, if you get your profits, you got to take them. Uh, when you said that this is a company with no fundamentals, well, what are the fundamentals? It, it, so, no, I mean, I mean, so, there is no, there's no CFA. Right, no, there's no, no CFA. I, I that. Does that, oh, oh, right. does that, is it, is the implication that that <laughs> technical analysis is more accurate in these sorts of cases where the company doesn't have profits, where there isn't well, a price to you book, wonder where about that. I mean, I, per, you'd say it, it might have its error rate too, and yet how can well, again? There's not a single person. How could you have a? How could you have well-trained people? Some believe it's worth 500. Some believe it's worth 50. That right there tells you there's a problem on the fundamental side, right? So what we can do now is only make a judgment that it's maybe oversold, or one could say, no, I want to double my short and really press in. That's perfectly valid too. But I think you have to make your calls here based on charts and price action, nothing else. Carter, thank you. Thanks, guys. Carter Worth. Quarter so macro. Guy, what My do you favorite was when Carter says in the middle of a sentence, "Please." I, it just, <laughs> it just kind of, it's just like it's very polite. Isn't it adorable? <laughs> I, listen, not to take any umbrage with what Carter said, but if you go back to February 2016, right after the turn of the new year, <laughs> this stock actually traded down about 151 or so before the S&P exploded off of 1810. So. I hear what he's saying, but good for Tim, and I think there is a shot now that 150 is in the crosshairs. Yeah, I, I, for me, I'd be looking for 150 and big volume, right? That's what you want to see. To me, I haven't seen a capitulation day in this yet, but I am looking for something for that rebound like Carter's looking yeah, for. Yeah, and I just want to say, I mean, to the point, I think if you caught Carter's fast money trade and it got back to 250, that would be the level of the century to lay out shorts, especially if you're as bearish on the fundamentals as Tim is.